Bullies and unrequited love are the least of Don's worries when dangerous secrets lurk in a school called Slaughterhouse. Babs Wallace wants her son, Don, to enroll in Slaughterhouse, an exclusive boarding school. Given the name, Don thinks it's a joke, but Babs insists that in Slaughterhouse, he'll befriend future prime ministers. He argues that it's for rich jerks, but when he sees a photo of a girl in the school brochure, he suddenly agrees to enroll. Soon, Babs and Don arrive at the school, where instructors try to keep the students in check. Still, some students become rowdy and even try to steal liquor bottles using a drone. Don looks sullen as he goes in, and Babs jokes that his peers won't eat him alive. In his room, Will Blake opens a box and snorts powder from it. Suddenly, Hargreaves knocks on his window and asks him to hide his rifle, which Will happily accepts. As Will checks out the rifle, Mr. Houseman enters, and the lad instantly acts as if he'd been innocently reading. Houseman introduces Don as Will's new roommate. Babs notices the name at the door, marked for Viscount Seymour. Hearing the name, Houseman turns grim and states that Seymour is no longer with them. Later, the students assemble, and Don spots the girl from the brochure, Clemsy Lawrence. He tries to make conversation, but Clemsy tells him that he doesn't belong there. She points out that he's standing with House Andromeda, which is exclusively for girls. As he returns to his group, House Sparta, he's confronted by Matthew Clegg, who criticizes him for talking to an upper sixth like Clemsy. Soon, the head of school, Caspar de Brunos announces the rules, stressing that the woods are off limits if they don't want to meet a slow and painful death. The students then meet the headmaster, called the Bat, and his dog, Mr. Chips. He welcomes them and promises to make their school great again. The Bat claims that others wish to bring them down, but he's determined to show them what the Slaughterians can do. Meanwhile, Houseman jogs in the woods as he listens to old voicemails from his girlfriend, Audrey, when he discovers a tower. Anti-frackers then break into the assembly, accusing the headmaster of letting frackers into the school area. As they hand out flyers, Caspar confronts the leader, who tries to poke at him. Clag catches his hand and breaks it before taking him and his group away. In the woods, Houseman confronts Terra Fracker employees for building the tower near the school. One of the men, Lambert, reminds him that the students aren't allowed in the woods, so they've made a tower for hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Defeated, Houseman goes, unaware of the earth cracking behind him. Meanwhile, the bat defends that they've started fracking for energy production, which will help improve the school. Suddenly, Clegg returns with bloody knuckles. Seeing this makes Will want to grab the rifle from his room. The students soon head back to their rooms, not noticing a necktie hung like a noose over the bathroom. At the fracking site, the diggers discover an underground cave system that caused a sinkhole. The sinkhole is full of gas, so they prepare to harvest it. Their radar detects something moving underground, but Lambert disregards them as moles. That evening, Houseman talks to Audrey on a video call, who's volunteering in South Sudan. Audrey stresses that the relationship was just for fun, but Houseman wants to be with her. Suddenly, an attractive doctor whispers in Audrey's ear, making her giggle. Afterward, gunshots erupt from outside, so Audrey quickly ends the call. At the nurse's station, the boys complain that Audrey left, so they're stuck with Miss Matron. In their dorm, Don reads the flyer from the gang that links fracking to demonic activity. His schoolmate, Chibwe, shares that fracking poisons the water, while Yuri adds that it causes sinkholes. Hearing this, Will sarcastically prays that the school will crumble. Suddenly, Houseman gathers the Sparta house and demands to know who hung the necktie in the bathroom. When no one confesses, Houseman storms off. Don asks Will about it, so he explains that Seymour hung himself with a necktie in the bathroom. The next day, Hargreaves lectures Wooten about the school's history. If the younger kid fails this test, Clegg will get them grounded. To help, Hargreaves recounts the myth about how a wandering knight slayed a mythical beast that attacked the village of Upper Slaughter. The knight was awarded the land and the title of First Earl of Slaughter. During Latin class, Don spots Clemsy outside with Caspar and Smudger. He waves to her, but she ignores ignores him. After class, Don asks Will about Clemsy, but he warns that he shouldn't pursue her. As if to answer why, a ball hits Don, and Caspar and Smudger warn him to watch where he's looking. In their room, Will explains the school hierarchy, with Clemsy in the upper class while the lowest is Wooten, who's cuffed in the bathroom after failing his test. Despite being nearly in the middle class, Don declares that he's in love with Clemsy. Clegg suddenly walks in, wondering what they're talking about. Matron, who's been listening, reveals that Don thinks he has a chance with Clemsy. Because of this, Clegg makes Don and his roommates jog until they collapse the next day. He calls Don a plebeian who won't make
make any connections in the school other than with his boot. With that, Clegg has Yuri and Cheapway run back to school while Don pulls Will out of the lake. They smell horrible gas, and Will explains that it's from the school tunnels. The two take a shortcut through the woods and discover the sinkhole. Curiously, Will lights a lighter and sees that the fire turns green. However, Don takes the lighter, afraid that he'll ignite the gas. The two fight over it as Will stresses that the lighter was a gift. Suddenly, sirens start wailing, so the two run, unaware that Lambert is just scaring them. They end up at the anti-frackers camp led by Woody. The man stresses that the sinkhole is the product of evil men poisoning the land. He adds that Terra Frackers CEO is friends with their headmaster. Thus, the deal is to create the facility within school grounds. That night, Don struggles to sleep, so he researches the anti-frackers from his phone. Just as he's about to return to bed, he sees Clegg inspecting the hallway, so he hides. As he does, Don ends up stumbling into the basement, where he finds a plaque for Teddy Chapman. Meanwhile, Will quietly sets up a necktie in front of Clegg's room. One day, Don calls his mother and cries that he can't take the school anymore as he doesn't belong there. During this, someone knocks on the booth, so he opens the door and yells, only to find Clemsy and her friend Kay. Trying to save face, Don hangs up on his mother. Clemsy apologizes for interrupting, and Kay invites him to hang out at the smoker's corner. There, Don complains about the school, which Clemsy calls a breeding ground for future world leaders. However, Don doesn't think everyone makes it, like Seymour. Clemsy recounts how Seymour was bullied, and Clegg found him with another boy, so he told his parents. Unknown to them, Will is eavesdropping from the basement. Don adds that people tell them to be themselves, yet it's difficult to do so in a place like their school. Clemsy compliments him for smiling through it all, but he confesses that he always smiles when he sees her. Suddenly, Will interrupts them to ask Don for his lighter. Firecrackers start erupting, and Kay warns that Clegg is on the warpath. Hearing this, Will and Don run, but Clegg still corners them by the lake. Accusing them of smoking in the school, he throws a firecracker at them, so Don kicks it toward the lake, setting it ablaze. Because of this, the bat calls Terra Fracker, but no one picks up. Still, he assures Houseman and the students that it was just a gas leak. A student suddenly delivers a champagne hamper from Terra Fracker, but the bat quickly dismisses him. This makes Houseman suspicious, but his phone rings, so he rushes out to talk to Audrey. With him out, the headmaster punishes Will and Don by keeping them at school during the Exiat weekend. Outside, Smudger reminds Clemsy that she shouldn't be talking to Will and Don. She insists on talking to whomever she wants, but Smudger's friends will insult him if they find out. He mentions that he wants Clemsy to be there when the head boy anoints him, but she refuses, though she insists that she still loves him. Meanwhile, Don is bummed about not going home until Kay tells him that Clemsy is staying too. Seeing him hopeful, Will tells him to accept the truth that he can't be with Clemsy. This annoys Don as Will hasn't even been truthful to him about Seymour, so he criticizes him for not caring that his roommate died. Later, Don sees Clemsy with Smudger, breaking his heart. He passes by the phone booth and overhears that Wooten didn't pass the test again, so his parents won't let him come home. While the rest head to their homes for the weekend, Don returns to the Sparta house, where he sees that Hargreaves is also staying. Feeling guilty for what he said to Will, he recounts the vandalisms and Clemsy's story about Seymour. He then sees another necktie hung on the archway with Will's name on the wall, so he hurries to their room. There, Will puts a necktie like a noose around his neck, but Don tackles him from it. Don apologizes for what he said, but Will is convinced that life is awful. He cries that his old roommate was all he had, revealing that he was the boy Clegg caught Seymour with, so Don comforts him. That night, the school suddenly starts shaking. Seeing this makes Will laugh while a drunk houseman passes out. Soon, the power goes out. Sensing danger, the anti-frackers start evacuating, but Woody is too high to get up. Meanwhile, Lambert and his men head to the sinkhole and hear something slamming against the wall they built around it. Soon, it escapes and starts killing. Upon hearing the roar, Woody notes that it's back, so he grabs his brother's picture and promises to get him. Don sees explosions in the woods, so he and Will go out. When Clegg checks their room later, he finds a collection of neckties, confirming that Will did the vandalism. Outside, Don shares that Woody was a slaughterian named Woodrow Chapman. Hearing the name, Will remembers that he was a school legend and his brother was Teddy whose name was on the plaque in the basement. Woody and Teddy tried to escape the school through the tunnels, but something happened. Before Will could say further, Kay and Clemsy surprise the two. The four head to the woods and find the anti-frackers camp in ruins and an abandoned terrafracker jeep nearby. On the ground, Kay finds an odd creature that jumps at Clemsy and tries to crawl into her top. 
Desperate, she rips off her shirt and slams the creature to death. The group then brings it to the bat, but he doesn't take it seriously. Clemsy insists on calling the police, but the bat refuses and threatens to report the students to their parents. Suddenly, they hear something growling. Elsewhere, Clegg confronts Hargreaves and Wooten, demanding to know where Will and Don are. When the two can't answer, he leaves. The scared headmaster agrees to leave, but insists there's not enough room in his car. He suggests Clemsy stay since she's upper sixth, but she argues that he's responsible for bringing terrifying into their grounds. Don adds that Woody told them that the bat was friends with the Terrifracker CEO, but the headmaster accuses Woody of spouting conspiracy theories since they were young. Suddenly, Chips barks at the window, and Will notices a lantern turning green. Matron checks the window just before a monster crashes inside and attacks her. The rest rush to the bat's car, but the headmaster takes his time to put on his driving gloves despite the students yelling at him. Soon, he puts the car in reverse, only to run over something. Horrified, the bat exits to check if it's Chips. Suddenly, his headless body slams onto the windshield, followed by his decapitated head. The creature then crawls onto the hood while Chips barks at the entrance, revealing that the headmaster didn't run over him earlier. Desperate, Don spins the car until the creature is thrown off. He then drives forward but crashes, so Clemsy leans over to the driver's seat. The creature jumps back onto the windshield, so Don hits the gas while Clemsy takes the wheel. Despite the horrifying situation, Don stares up at his crush until she yells at him to hit the brakes. He does so, and the creature is thrown into the science department. After confirming that it's dead, they hear another roar, so the students drive away. However, Clemsy insists on going back for Smudger. Hearing this, Don is crestfallen, until Clemsy clarifies that Smudger is her brother. This brightens his mood while Will mumbles that they're about to die. At the Sparta house, they reunite with Wooten and Hargreaves and gear themselves using abandoned supplies. They head to a clearing where the Upper Sixth has an intimate party, and Smudger is being lashed for his initiation. Don sneaks in and unties a drunk smudger, but two girls capture him. With no choice, Clemsy takes Will and Kay to rescue them. After a while, Clegg appears behind Don, planning to rescue him so he can punish him in his own way. Meanwhile, Houseman suddenly confronts Wooten and Hargreaves, clueless about what's happening. By the lake, Kaspar makes out with a girl until a monster bites off his hand. This disrupts the party, and Clegg gets taken. As monsters feast on the teens, Clemsy rescues Don, and the two carry smudger away. As Houseman confiscates a spear from Wooten, he he sees the students running away from a creature. The man freezes in shock just as the creature reaches him, so he stabs it with a spear. They soon hide in the smoker's corner, where Don goes to a shocked houseman, stressing that they need him. Houseman pulls himself together and tries to plan their escape when they see a flare coming from the cadet's cabin. They head there and find several firearms locked away. The power returns and they find Clegg inside, who's surprisingly alive. Houseman asks Clegg to open the gun's lock, but he refuses to arm Don and Will, calling them degenerates. He accuses them of the vandalism and aims a gun at Will. When Houseman tries to stop him, he shoots him with a pellet. He holds the rest at gunpoint, plotting to use Don and Will as bait so they can escape. Suddenly, Houseman's cell phone rings. This distracts Clegg, so Don tackles him, leading to a fight. During this, Houseman tries to talk to Audrey, but the signal is failing, so Kay orders him to tell her what's happening. Hargreaves then aims a rifle at Clegg, but he refuses to take orders from him, insisting that this is war. Hargreaves replies that this is Sparta before shooting him. Unwilling to be defeated, Clegg pulls a flare gun at the group, but two creatures chomp on him from the window. Houseman tries to save him, but the monsters tear at them both. In his last moments, Houseman listens to Audrey's voice before telling the kids to save themselves. The students run, leaving Houseman's phone, where Audrey finally breaks up with him. The group rushes back into the school and heads to the basement, where they see Teddy's plaque broken. Where it used to be is a passage, so they go in and find drawings on the wall depicting the school's history, claiming that the first Earl built the school above the beast's labyrinth. They hear a monster entering the tunnels, so the group runs until Woody appears, looking for his brother. Will reminds him that Teddy's gone, but he can still save them. He recounts that Woody managed to get out of there when he and Teddy tried to escape the school, but Woody reveals that they were trying to blow up the school, not escape it. A monster approaches them, and Smudger recalls that the creatures are subterranean, so they must hate light. With that, Woody uses a flashlight against the creature to scare it. He lets it sniff his hand, seemingly taming the monster until it attacks him. The students pull Woody off the creature but end up with only half his body. As he dies, he hallucinates his brother before the monster grabs him again. The students flee and find themselves below the monster's lair. When a creature blocks their path, Will faces it head on to let the others pass. Finally, they reach the end, but Don stops. Knowing what he'll do, Clemsy kisses him and tells him not to die. Don then hurries to save Will. He takes Will's box of powder and blows it up the creature's nose, driving it away. The two then rush out while more monsters chase them.
them. As they exit, Don asks for Will's lighter, and the latter reveals that it was Seymour's. Dedicating their next act to Seymour, Don lights the flame and throws it into the tunnel. The fire spreads under the school and the fracking tower, destroying both as the students watch. Victoriously, the group finally walks away from Slaughterhouse while Chips finds Houseman still alive in the woods. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.